Who are you and why should developers care? I'm Dylan Morley. I'm a distinguished engineer and I work for ASOS. We're an e-com fashion retailer based out of London in the UK and we've got millions of customers around the world. So I'm really interested in developer experience, giving our engineers the best tools they can to, to deliver the best outcomes and, and do their best work. Amazing. So we are going to focus on what it takes to run uh, a platform being used by millions and millions of customers. But first, your title is Distinguished Engineer. Can you tell me what does that actually mean? It's a fantastic job title. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, in tech, you can go one of two ways. There's a couple of tracks you can go on. So you can go the management track, and you'll be an engineering manager or engineering director. And it's that, that's the management track. Or you'll hear people talk about saying they're, they're an IC, individual contributor. And distinguished engineer is a, a job level on that particular track. So within the IC track, you generally stay technical. You work on problems, and you're, as you go up the levels, uh, your scope might increase. So the title will mean different things to different companies. So a distinguished engineer at, at Microsoft or Amazon or wherever, they're probably working across multiple areas. They have big impacts working across you know, a, a large amount of scope. Uh, so that's generally what it is. It's uh, your scope increases. But uh, yeah, I like my job title. <laughs> So onto ASOS now and the operation behind it. Can you tell me where is code actually used within the online store? Sure. So we have a number of different experiences that we offer to our customers. There's the mobile apps that we, we build ourselves. So we have an iOS app, we have an Android app, and then there'll be the web experience as well. And what we've done there is we've broken that down into an API first system. So there will be an API behind every part of the experience. So if you want to get a product, there'll be a product API. When you want to place an orders, there'll be an orders API. And you can imagine how that would work. So we've broken that down into, it's a microservice architecture, uh, which allows us to, to scale those individual components in the, um, and, and get the volumes that we need because we run at very high volume. Our product API powering our searches might do 50,000 requests a second. So to be able to run at those sort of volumes and particularly in busy periods like a Black Friday sale, uh, you, you really need to scale that out and have a lot of compute that sits behind it. So our teams will own those particular components and they will they'll build them out and make sure that they can scale out and, and meet our requirements. What does a team look like for taking responsibility, say, for example, for the orders API? Is there a team of people that are solely responsible for, for the orders API and then maybe one for the products or how? How does it work? So we've organized ourselves around a product operating model. So we'll have a, a product manager, we'll work with an engineering team, and they'll be responsible for a number of capabilities. And so they'll generally own those APIs. And every we, we all believe that all software should have an owner. There needs to be someone who is ultimately accountable for its health and yeah. for the running of that. Someone's got to get a phone call if, when things go wrong, right? So, <laughs> uh, But yeah, they also need to think about the future as well. How can you get more value out of that particular investment? So uh, yeah, the team is structured around uh, around a product that they look after and the OKRs and the, and the KPIs that they're responsible for delivering on uh, and the, you know the software that they own is part of that. Where actually is software used throughout the business? You've, you've got the product API and you've got maybe what would be assumed as the, uh, the typical online store but is, is there anywhere else where software is being used that maybe some people might be surprised? Sure so I think you, you make a decision at a certain point whether you are going to buy rent or build software and and you asos we believe that you should build it when you can differentiate when you can build, have something that is better than the, what's available on the market um, because it is you know you've got to invest time and effort into looking after that building it and then running it and you know owning codes the hard bit so uh, there'll be parts of the business where we've decided that we don't need to build you can just rent uh, a SaaS solution or otherwise buy something and, and run it yourself. Um, and, and I think when you run warehouses and other parts of the business that such as, you know, we do all our own photography at ASOS okay. uh, and we have to digitize hundreds of products every week and get those into our site. So there'll be other parts of software that's, you know, off the, off the shelf products that we can use that will enable us to do that. And then it's the, it's the digital customer experience where we really want to differentiate. And that's where we want to build out the best possible UX, things that our customers will interact with. Um, that's where we really want to invest the time and effort. So realistically, you're approaching it from a kind of a customer first standpoint of does what we're actually doing here benefit the customer? Absolutely. That's where you want to buy, uh, that's where you want to build the software and where you can just empower your business and help your logistics and, and help, you know, help do uh, photography or help run the warehouses. That's where we'll rent some software and you just build the integrations with those because it's all about the flow of data. And that's really how we like to think about it. That systems thinking uh, around uh, a product life cycle. So products will need to uh, have hundreds of new products every week. 
And so that has to be coming, have, have models. We have to shoot all the photography, uh, get it into, the, into our digital assets, put it live on the site, get the stock into the warehouse. And you can think about that flow of data that we need to get across all of our systems to enable us to do that. So ASOS itself for its online store, have you guys built your own, um, your own custom online store system or are you using something that maybe already exists as a framework and then you're adapting it? Yeah, so we've built our own systems. We've built our own APIs and, and integrated them all together. So uh, yeah, it's a run at the scale that we do, which are millions of customers and, and many thousands of requests a second. Uh, we found that running that on our own infrastructure that we run in, we're a big partner with Microsoft and we run that on uh, Kubernetes for a, lot of our, for a lot of our use cases. So what does it look like? You mentioned Black Friday earlier. I imagine it's a really busy time. Of course, you don't want the site to go down for customers. What does scaling look like when you have these busy periods? Sure. So you have to scale out pretty uh, massively. So running on Kubernetes allows you to do that. Uh, particularly, we've containerized all of our software. We can deploy that onto Kubernetes, and then we can just scale that out as much as possible. So uh, um, and we make sure that all of our databases and everything is capable of doing that as well. So you scale the compute, you can scale the data layer, uh, and we make sure that we, we're making sensible decisions about synchronous and asynchronous usage uh, and, and use patterns that enable us to scale. So onto the topic of AI now, we know that every developer is using AI, every development team is using AI. How are you guys using it within your product building process? So we were early adopters of GitHub Copilot, and we were uh, first on, a, I think what everyone was using as a, the autocomplete. So you're working with, within your IDE, it's giving you suggestions, and you get some feedback in the IDE, which was, it was useful. But I think now where we're seeing agentic flows coming in, it's, it's really gone into the next uh, level. So uh, that's why we're experimenting now is how we can use AI-assisted uh, engineering. And I think, you know, you know that, that difference between AI-assisted and agentic, um, I, I think of that as when you're working and iterating locally in your IDE, you're getting that feedback, you're, you've got a little feedback loop and you're, and you're talking to the agent and you're, you're working in that way. That's, I think, AI-assisted engineering. But then you might give a task to an agent and just say, go and do that. And now let it go off and, and you know, just um, work almost unassisted for a while. And that's that more agentic level. And then we're seeing uh, at Universe here, there's uh, announcements on on what you can do now with Copilot. You know, is it just a sign an issue and off it goes and you can, it's getting better and better at working in an unassisted way. And you can run multiple things in parallel. And, and that's where we're starting to really experiment with and seeing where we can get the value from that. Um, I think as well, you can just give people tools and they will... You know, engineers are a smart bunch of people. They'll go off and they'll hack around it and they'll figure out ways to work with it. But everyone will kind of work in their own way. They'll get different outcomes. Uh, some will be stronger than others. And, and you know, you'll just end up with this way that some people really like the tooling. Some people don't th see the success as much. So we're trying to come up with a process uh, that says, we say to me, look, for this particular use case, if you go about it like this, you'll find that you'll get a better outcome. So we're trying to put a level of process in place and, and give people a bit of guidance so that they know, okay, that's how I go about it. Uh, for this use case, I should work in my IDE. For that one, I just, just to create an issue, assign it to Copilot and let it go. Okay. So many of the people watching this might be thinking, wow, it's a, you've got a massive operation here and they may be wanting to go into, into a company that has kind of a similar structure. What advice would you give for engineers who are joining a big team and maybe feel like a, a small cog in a big operation? I think as I, it's get involved, right? Really understand the tech stack, understand the flow of data and understand all the systems. So I think when you join a team, um, just work on pair and, and try and soak up knowledge because I think that's really important. It's, it's not so much about just writing the code. It's about understanding the business requirements and it's about understanding all your dependencies, all the people that you work with, uh, the things that you depend on, other APIs that you might use and just understanding all those systems is super important. Um, and, you know, when you're crafting the code and working with other team members that will come this the, the tooling is adopted is uh, it's moving at a really fast pace and we're getting new things all the time so i think that that systems level thinking and really understanding uh what the problems are that you're trying to solve that's the really important thing dylan thank you very much for your time thank you